Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be doing an overview of Orbis Dots Terrain, which is available on the Unity Asset Store. This is one of the few Dots assets that are available on the Unity Asset Store, and I think this one's pretty interesting, so I'm definitely happy to do an overview with it today. Now, I did just wanna mention that this asset is currently 50% off in Unity's Spring Store sale, which is going on in their Asset Store right now. Also, the rival Dots Character Controller is currently 50% off. Also, if you catch it quickly, Dots Net is going to be part Part of the lightning sale which means you can get it for up to 80 percent off i believe it starts saturday morning but then the more people buy it then the deal gets less and less until it goes up to an eventual 50 percent off as well not to mention there are plenty more awesome assets available in the spring store sale so i'd highly recommend that you go check it out because that's only going to be available for the next couple weeks or so i believe it's until april 29th so definitely go check out the sales that they have going on i will have some links down in the description below by the way those are affiliate links so that means that that, you know if you do decide to purchase something i may receive a small portion of that sale so not only do you get some awesome assets but it does support me continually doing this awesome stuff on youtube here and i would be extremely grateful for that anyways let's talk Orbis Terrain. Let's do a little overview here. Um, so installing it is actually pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Basically, you just kind of need the regular entities packages, like, you know, entities, hybrid render, burst, things you'd expect like that. Uh, you also do need the physics packages installed as well. Um, you could just use the regular physics packages if you want, but this does support Havoc physics as well. So you can definitely import that if you're interested in that kind of thing. And one other package that you may not expect is actually the editor coroutines package. I guess it does does use the uh, editor coroutines package for a couple things uh, to make this asset work. But other than that, it's basically just as easy as importing the assets. Now it does just kind of dump a bunch of things in your root folder. So you may need to do a little bit of cleanup if you do, you know, like to store those things kind of in uh, one single folder. But anyways, let's just kind of go through a couple of the demos here and just kind of show you what this is about. So I've just opened up this uh, atmosphere scene and this is probably one of the most interesting demos that they have to show off here um, so we can just hit the play button and get into it you'll see that it kind of just generates this nice awesome world um, it's this you know sphere terrain we have this you know cool little atmosphere around it um, and so we can use the you know the double w a s and d to kind of fly in and then we can hold shift to go a little bit faster and you'll see, of course, as we get in closer to the terrain, the terrain gets a little bit more detailed and we see all these trees popping up. Now, one thing that I kind of like is, um, you know, how those these trees kind of like fade in. They they seem to kind of like grow up out of the ground. You know, there's kind of like some, some fading happening with the different LODs in the terrain. I think it just kind of leads to you know, a little bit less of a jarring experience than, um, you know, some new objects popping in. Um, of course, you know, these settings can be configured so it, um, you know, these can actually kind of like pop in at a, at a further distance from the camera. The camera controller is a little bit wonky, but you know, it's good enough to just kind of fly around and check out this whole little atmosphere here. Um, it does also allow you to press the Q button to kind of like spawn these physics cubes into the world. And you'll see that, um, you know, they kind of, you know, of course, react to physics and things like that. Unfortunately, you know, if you really spawn a bunch of these uh, cubes into the world here, the performance does tank pretty quickly. So you'll see that, um, you know, I was at like 200 or so. I'm already down to like 90, just kind of like spawning a bunch of these into the world. And it doesn't take much longer to get down to like 20 frames a second. So that's uh, kind of an unfortunate thing, but it's just, you know, the physics engine is... Um, you know, definitely, definitely take a quite a, a toll on the performance there. So anyways, I can just kind of fly around and I'll come back out here. Of course, you can see, uh, you know, the LODs are changing, you know, frame rate is still just, you know, pretty consistent. It's right around 90 right now, which is, you know, kind of where it was at with all those physics objects spawned in and everything. But you'll see, yeah, this is kind of basically the big terrain here. One thing that it does come with out of box is a basically solution to reset the uh, origin position of the world so you don't have those kind of issues with a large floating point number. So, you know, basically, um, you know, as you fly out for, you know, a further distance then you know, basically the way that the, the floating points kind of store the numbers, uh, things aren't exactly as accurate at, um, you know, high level distances. So, you know, a lot of times you'll hear games um, where basically the player is kind of, you know, always the center of the world. There's, you know, something kind of similar to this happening here, um, where basically once you get past a certain distance, then it just resets the origin of the world position to where the camera is right there. And so I believe 
by default it's set to like a distance of 8,000 units um, but you can kind of configure that to whatever you like all right so this one is the cube height map layout this one is you know not really that interesting of a demo but it does kind of give you a little bit of an idea about uh, how these terrains work so basically the way that these spherical terrains work is it's actually a like six-sided you know you can basically think of it like a box that's been you know unraveled and kind of the way it works is basically you have you know these six different terrains and you kind of need to you know match uh, each of them up so that when it is all mapped onto a sphere everything looks good now you do just need to keep in mind that you know like this edge right here and this edge right here these are going to be connected as well so when you're you know making your height maps you really need to kind of like figure out um, how to basically make sure that you know everything lines up on those two edges right there and so that's basically actually how these terrains are generated so there's a actually a couple different ways you can generate them so the the kind of most common way I guess would be uh, by using these height maps so you can kind of use some external tools to generate these height maps and that's basically how the terrain maps so they don't really have any like built-in tools that you can use to um, you know modify the terrain so there's nothing like you know similar to what unity has where you can just kind of you know like paint on the terrain and you can you know lift it up and and dig it down and everything like that so it's all height map based so it's not like you know voxel based so you can't actually make like caves or anything with this um, but you can have you know nice mountains and valleys and canyons and everything like that and here's kind of another demo where they have like multiple planets so it's you know very similar to kind of what we had before same kind of thing where we can kind of zoom in and you'll see all these like you know trees kind of come into view as we get closer and closer to them in this instance we also have kind of another planet off to the distance and i believe there's a moon over to this side going going and here is the moon over here um the the terrain on that one over there um not like super interesting i really do like the one on this moon so i'm gonna fly over there right now and kind of show it to you you see as we get you know closer and closer to the moon you'll see like the level of details changing a little bit just to make that you know terrain much more defined and actually you can kind of see that um there's kind of like the the little line in between um, basically where those cubes kind of meet together so we'll see you know as we go in closer is that line gonna kind of go away let's see here so yeah you can really see it kind of there and then you know getting closer and closer so yeah it looks like this one you know maybe not the best <laughs> job of lining up those two edges but um, you know still not bad nonetheless but yeah anyways I mean let's kind of go in here I really like the the whole like moon like it it looks like a really good kind of moon texture height map in my opinion here so there's a you know cool shot of the moon and the two planets there but you can do more than just do you know spherical terrains there is flat ones as well so this is just kind of a demonstration of a nice flat one i think this is a really cool demo kind of reminds me a lot of like the grand canyon except um you know instead of <laughs> instead of water down in the canyon there are a bunch of trees so um, but this is, you know, still really cool looking. Did mention that there are uh, multiple different ways that you can actually generate these terrains. So, you know, one of them is by kind of using the height map based approach. And there is also another way where you can basically use like a procedural generation approach here. So if we click on this uh, flat terrain here, this kind of allows us to do some configurations on this. So you see that right now the generation type is currently set to height map. So we can actually change this to procedural. And you'll see that this is, well, now this is kind of, you know, all screwed up. But, um, you know, we can kind of like go in there and change some of the procedural generation parameters here. But yeah, we can kind of play around with things like the uh, frequency here. I wonder if the scale is just set to what the like terrain height is. Yeah, so scale is set to terrain height. So we can kind of, you know, bring the scale down a little bit, make it maybe look a little bit closer to a little more natural here haven't played around with the procedural generation settings too much but um, you know it's an interesting thing nonetheless that it is there and also they do have this other cool scene where we can um, you know start making some more kind of like interesting world shapes so this one is in what is it called an o'neill cylinder so it's basically like you know the inside of a cylinder is all kind of mapped to this terrain again we can kind of you know go in here and we're going to see that all these you know um you know trees are going to grow and then of course we can kind of you know follow the walls up here and you know go all around so if you know 
you want to make like a, a halo world or something like that you know you can definitely do that so anyways that's going to be an overview on orbis the dots terrain asset on the unity asset store once again it is 50 percent off right now so if this is something that you're interested in now is definitely a great time to buy it once again you can buy it using the affiliate links down in the description below but i would like to hear from you what do you think of this asset is this something that you would like to see used in an actual project are there any particular features that you might think that are missing from this that you would want to see in maybe future versions versions of it so definitely let me know down in the comment section below anyways if you did enjoy today's video i'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about unity's entity component system and their data oriented technology stack of course if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on discord over at tmg.dev discord i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one